All right, so here we are in Adobe Flash slash Animate, and uh, if you're just uh, using the program for the first time, uh, we're gonna go over a lot of the basics here. If you wanna kinda cut forward to just illustrating and you kinda already have the basics down, feel free to skip to the next video. Uh, this is for the true new users out there, and uh, I, I am going to give you guys a starting assets uh, file. You can open that up, or you can just begin with a new document, so just go over here to File, New. And what you want to do is set uh, Action Script over here. Even though you're not going to be using Action Script, the one that you want to avoid is HTML5 Canvas. Uh, even though Flash has some awesome um, features for exporting out HTML5 content, uh, not everything uh, design-wise is included in there, like some of the filters and stuff. So just set this to Action Script 3. Uh, regardless of whether or not you're going to be programming with it, you're not. Uh, and then I'm going to set the uh, the width to 1080 by 1920, or at least that's what I did in this document over here. The frame rate really doesn't uh, matter too much. You can always kind of change things around um, when you export out your animation sequences. Uh, but if you want just kind of a base frame rate, that's fine. 30, uh, click OK. Again, I've already got a document open over here. And uh, you might be seeing a completely different uh, workspace. Uh, that's because I have kind of fashioned mine after uh, one the kind of older uh, flash interfaces uh, but well first off the one that you might get out of the box has the uh, these tools uh, over here on the right side which as many of you know is just feels crazy it's creepy who wants to be going over here when every other program especially in Adobe's own lineup has all their tools over here on the left side so uh, one of the things you could do just right away is uh, switch from whatever the default is over here to classic and that's going to get you pretty close to um, kind of how I work I like working with things and you can see that uh, when it did that it put the the library over here and this is um, where we're going to end up storing a lot of the artwork that we create and that we can reuse later on basically just dragging it back out uh, but uh, even for right now if you if you kind of want to ignore that that's fine uh, it is actually automatically collapsed uh, the properties are what we really care about and one new thing in, in uh, animate that they've done is they have this as sort of this pop out thing from as you can see like over here uh, I would undock that and then just kind of put it into here okay well no that didn't do the trick uh, Let's see, expand panel, there it is. Okay, so now it's, uh, it feels a little bit more like it's kind of fully part of the interface. And again, if you want to just kind of take the library out for right now, that's okay. We can always open that back up later. So uh, this is gonna give you access or quick ac quicker access to most of the attributes that you're gonna be kind of using uh, as you develop things like your filters, setting the color effect, uh, position, all that. You'll probably just move around the screen, but um, uh, those are the highlights and then if you're seeing your toolbar uh, stacked as a single column like that uh, I just prefer to go as a, a, a double column over here first off it means that it, you know there's no hiding of tools in the screen capture software uh, but um, you know I, I would just say match up with what I got so at least you're not kind of confused when I go over here into this second uh, column and then if you're also seeing the darker view go over here to your preferences uh, this is totally up to you this makes no changes in terms of where the tools are laid out but uh, I, I'm really kind of not a fan of the uh, this sort of uh, low pro profile night mode <laughs> so I call it. I like the light mode, although uh, I guess I've kind of gotten used to it in Photoshop now that I think about it. But uh, in Flash, I still prefer this for some weird reason. So anyway, uh, that should get you uh, pretty close to uh, to where I'm I'm starting from. And uh, let's talk about some of the things that are probably going to trip you up as a, a first time uh, animator, Flash developer, uh, which is well the timeline. That's one of the big ones. Okay. And you can see in a new document, we just have layer one already. And uh, thinking of the, the timeline kind of more in terms of uh, layers is a good idea. You know, you, uh, many of you are probably familiar with your layers in Photoshop. So if I were to create a new layer, go over here to new layer and draw something, just let's take a blue circle, for example. So I just got this circle over here and draw this over top. Well, that didn't turn out blue like I thought. Uh, if I draw that over top of the what's currently in there, which might be nothing if you're starting with a new document. It, um, this is a full layer above anything else, okay? So if I, so I can lock up that layer and you know, I've got no chance of kind of selecting anything in there uh, and, and vice versa, of course. If I lock this one, I can't select anything over here. Uh, I think what confuses a lot of people sometimes is when they're illustrating and they, they'll do something like this. So for example, let's put a third layer in here. I'll just make this one invisible and I'm going to draw a red square over top of this. So um, these are 
again, completely separate layers, so they're not going to interact with each other. Now, what I could do, though, is I could select both at once, and I could cut them off of there, so just using your kind of standard cut hotkey, hot and then paste them onto a new layer, and then you'll notice when I do that, the, the two vector shapes have combined together, but this one has kind of taken a chunk out of the other one, all right, and that there is a stroke around there, so let me just get rid of that too. Uh, but the important thing to note here is that by combining the two together, the, the, the two of these shapes that are not movie clips, uh, they eat away at one another, right? So now I can go over here and just drop this guy on top of this one, and you'll see that, oh, look at that, I kind of got like a profile of a, a smiley face, a little Pac-Man that's happy. Uh, so th that's actually kind of a, a key part of illustrating with Flash, but it's also something that uh, I think a lot of people, it, it, it confuses them initially. They're not expecting, you know, one shape to kind of uh, eat away at another one. And also, too, uh, you might be in a mode that I would recommend turning off. And let me go grab one of the shapes that you're going to need to play with for this. Okay, so if you go over here to your circle or your rectangle, you'll notice that you've got this little icon over here that uh, has object drawing mode, or says object drawing mode, and you'll notice that if you were to draw with this on, it, uh, let me get back over to it, let's see. Well, for, first off, you're seeing that uh, you can now see the, the vector points of it. Uh, let me go back and turn that back off again. Okay, so when you toggle these on and off, one of your main things that you're seeing is, again, the, the vector points that are making that up. And actually, this looks like a little bit of a change from earlier versions of Flash, where object drawing mode would always put a bounding box around it. But you can see that um, now I can move this guy around, and it's not having that same effect that it had before, where it was kind of eating away at things. So it's, it's not really that the shape itself has changed. It's just that you're in a, a different drawing mode. So let's go back over here. I'm going to undo that or get rid of it and actually toggle it back off and oh actually I, I should say that it, it, it still is in that drawing object mode so if you um, if you created it in it uh, I guess apparently it, uh, it stays in it and then if you want to uh, kind of undo that uh, what you can do is you can go over here to uh, break apart all right so hit B on that and then it does go back to being in its you know kind of raw vector form where you can you know, move it over top of things and it's going to eat away at that. You do have to de deselect it for that effect to take place. Uh, it's just that I just never go into this drawing mode because um, I, I just don't find it that useful. If I am going to make something into its own little separate piece of artwork uh, that is uh, kind of, you know, not going to be included in dropping on top of other things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F8 on the keyboard or you can uh, right click and go over here to uh, convert to symbol, which is actually getting cut off. Let's see if I can maybe up there. Oh, it's right at the bottom of it. Well, you can hit A8 or you can go over here to uh, modify, go to convert to symbol, and then you name it. So, you know, we're going to say blue circle, right? And then now you do see that bounding box around it, kind of indicating more that it is its own little standalone piece of artwork. So I can, even though I'm on the same layer as this little red chunk over here, De decapitated Pac-Man. We, um, I can let go of it, deselect it, and it's not going to take a, any part of him out of that, right? And also, the nice thing about making th things into a movie clip is uh, they're better for animation. So, for example, I could keyframe this a bunch of times, um, move it around, and um, then just go back in and edit the original source artwork by double-clicking inside of here. And let's say then I wanted to change it and make it into this kind of smushed up whatever that is piece of clay, right? All those keyframes that I'd animated with are going to now reflect this new shape inside of here. And then also, too, you'll notice that in the library, and if you want to get back to that, you can just go over here to library, or the hotkey is command L or control L. Uh, you'll notice that the, the previous <laughs> blue circle is now uh, this you know, smushed up sh shape and I can drag that out and uh, it, it becomes this reusable piece of artwork. So if I were to go in and now double click inside of here again and change it one more time, you'll see that it's changing every one of those. And that's another thing that people do get confused uh, with right away. They think, oh, okay, I'm going to copy and paste this, make a new version of it. And then they go in and they start manipulating it and they see that, you know, all the other versions are also being changed. Uh, you can, uh, copy and or really duplicate a piece of artwork and make it its unique 
uh, make it a unique object in the library by going over here to modify, go to symbol, and then duplicate symbol. And I've actually um, set this as a hotkey. I use it so much. So Command D is the, the hotkey I use for it. Uh, I believe out of the box, Flash does not use that as the hotkey. And uh, I can't remember what it does. But uh, so you can see now when I duplicate it, it goes to blue circle copy. Uh, so if you ever see that that uh, prompt show up where it says duplicate, uh, know that I am actually not I'm not copying it. I'm making a new symbol in the library, and you can see that when I open the library back up, we've got blue circle and blue circle copy. So if I go and I change this one, let's say I just delete it out and I go back and I make an actual circle again, you'll notice that the other ones that we have over here are not you know reflective. <laughs> They're not now circles again. <sighs> Let me take a breath. And before I move on to actually teaching some pinball art, let's let's talk about uh, one more thing uh, that you should be aware of. Again, let's grab, actually this time around, let's get a square out here, make it a green square just so I see a different color. And um, you'll notice that there's two arrows over here. Uh, I usually end up going to the black arrow and uh, I have a hotkey set up for this so that's uh, just it's the letter A. So if you ever you know kind of see this uh, magically get selected it's just that I hit a hotkey and um, you'll notice that I can you know manipulate the vector art in this let me get rid of this stroke that I got applied yeah I can ma manipulate the vector artwork uh, but I'm not seeing the actual vectors that are comprising this square now a square is just four points right so there's one here one here one here one here and you'll notice every time I hover over that with the mouse you can see that little right angle next to the mouse icon but if I go between those then I can start bending it around like that. And uh, just being an old Flash user, I really prefer uh, using this method uh, and going back to the olden days of Flash when it was owned by Macromedia. It, uh, you only had this option, and then I can't remember at what point, but they uh, probably when Adobe came around, they decided to put in the subselection tool. So that's that white arrow. And you'll notice then if I go over here and I select the same shape, it does kind of get treated more as um, kind of like that object drawing mode a little bit where you can actually see the, the vector artwork inside of here. And you can do all the same things that you could before, actually I guess except for bending it. Let's see, see I use this so rarely. But um, you know, here you are, you, you can see the vector artwork and maybe you can get a little bit of a firmer grasp on them. But I really don't have much trouble kind of imagining where that vector artwork is inside of here. And um, also too, uh, again, I, I like the ease of just being able to kind of treat it like this uh, piece of silly putty here, and bend it around. Uh, and then another thing you can do is hold down the control key, oops, I'm sorry, the option key on the keyboard and uh, see if I have to identify it, I have a problem. And then uh, you can create new vector points. So again, holding down option and then maybe on the P PC it is control. Uh, I'm just adding in or alt, I'm adding in new points and so you can make this kind of weird star shape. And then of course, if you go over here to your sub selection tool again, you could actually see those points that I created on there. But yet again, <laughs> we're gonna be doing things the, uh, the, the Justin way in this uh, tutorial series. So probably you're not gonna ever see me go to the sub selection tool uh, and you'll never see me go and use that, uh, the dr object drawing tool or have this sub selection on over here. So. Uh, I'm going to keep things uh, relatively simple, and I think you're actually going to be amazed actually how, how easily you can draw complex shapes with um, just kind of your, your your bare objects over here, square circles, and occasionally what we do is we take a line and we kind of draw through it and use that to separate pieces. For example, you know, you can delete that out and then delete out the line. So we're going to get into all that uh, in the core of the series. So let's uh, get back to uh, the starting file over here, and uh, we'll talk about the uh, the pieces that are uh, included in the starting assets file in just a moment.